Thanks for staying with us. Uh, our hot topic right now is bordering on what the Registrar of the Joint Admission and Matriculation Board JAM, Professor Ishak Oloyede, uh, revealed that some Nigerian universities admit students as young as 10, violating the legal age limit of 18 for university admissions. During the JAM policy meeting in Abuja, Oloyede mentioned that universities like Unilag and OAU have a minimum age requirement of 16, but others admit even younger students. He narrated in an incident where a candidate who graduated from a Nigerian university at 15 faced issues applying for a master's degree in Germany due to her young age. The European Union, EU, questioned the possibility of such young graduates from Nigerian universities, highlighting potential future complications for Nigerian graduates seeking international opportunities. Oloyede emphasized that JAM did not admit the underage candidate, pointing out that the responsibility lies with the universities that register such students. So, we're being joined this morning by an education researcher, Dr. Peter Ogudoro. Good morning and welcome to the program, sir. Good morning. It's my pleasure to join you on the program. Okay. Um, there is this issue that has been raging right now. Jam is saying that uh, there should be an age limit for, um, for admissions into universities and all that. Uh, I'd just like to get your opinion on this. Should there be an age limit and why? There has always been an age limit. It's not a new policy. Um, JAMP has never officially um, encouraged parents to send their children who are under 16 to seek admission to go to university. So JAMP policy over the years, right from the beginning of uh, its existence, to the best of my knowledge, has been that the minimum age for a child, to, for a young person, a teenager to uh, seek admission into university 16 years. Uh, and so uh, it's not new. Uh, uh, most countries really around the world uh, have, um, especially in Europe and North America, have uh, the average age at which young people get into university as about 18. But uh, that is not to say that every other country should borrow that. Uh, much of what you find depends on the, the structure of the lower levels of the education system in those kinds of countries. Um, UK, for example, has um, a sixth form, has a level program which you get into after uh, your high school, where you spend two years. And so that's why in the UK, you would expect that a child would be entering university at the age of 18. And of course, uh, the average first degree in the UK also lasts only three years, uh, whereas in Nigeria, the average first degree lasts four years. So. Uh, you shouldn't, because Niger um, people get into the university at the age of 18 in the UK, then you start a season on a, a minimum of 18 for uh, Ni Nigerians who want to get into university. Our circumstances are different, but I must um, uh, put on record the fact that um, uh, some of us who are professionals in the industry are unhappy with many parents who uh, rush their students uh, into tertiary uh, institutions uh, because some of them say they want to save school fee, they want to save money. <laughs> so uh, if they move them away from primary school uh, uh, at the age of, uh, let's say, nine or 10, and then uh, uh, not allowing them to do primary six, some not even allowing them to do primary five. Uh, so what they're trying to do is to fast track things, especially in a country where there's no money, where people are poor. So they are saving the school fee that they're supposed to give to private school operators. Uh, for the last, you know, two years of primary school. So um, is what we should be going for here is a balance. Parents are doing the wrong thing, uh, but the solution to that is not for government to suddenly wake up and say that you can't get into university until you're age 18. That would be another wrong. I mean, and of course, we always blow the grammar that two wrongs do not make a right. Yeah, because I, I was wondering, is it not too late in the ladder where you bring that kind of a policy when uh, education at the, at the lower rungs of that ladder is just porous? Anybody can, you just give birth, six months later that child is in, the, in, in school. Uh, you're leaving that child in, in the crèche or something and you're going to work and all that. The system does not allow for a parent to even take care of this child for as long as possible because you're afraid that once you stop working, you are, you are dead, so, so to speak, if, you, if I can borrow that word. So even if we need to have a, an age limit, should it not start from a younger age and uh, things be done to accommodate people who, 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 
who maybe have reached a point that they want to transit into something else and they can they can be accommodated then yeah well uh, the jam registrar knows that um, what still uh, obtains now officially for especially for jam is that the minimum age at which you get into university is, is age 16. Not nothing has changed. Is the, that idea is not the idea of jam registrar. It's the idea of the minister of education, and he has to find the humility, you know, to admit that. Uh, but we might have to also, um, you know, make an educated guess as to why the government is insisting on a minimum age of 18. Uh, we uh, there is more to it than meets the eye. Uh, you know that we now have the student loan, loan scheme, which enables undergraduates to borrow money uh, in their own merit and, and to be able to fund their education, rather than waiting for their parents to go and struggle and find the money to do so, or for their parents to borrow money and take them to school. So the law uh, and the relevant policies uh, make it uh, possible for students to borrow money on their own merit. They don't have to wait for their parents to sign the documents. And so we know that um, below 18, you are a minor. So, but if you are up to the age of 18, you have become an adult and you can, you know, be prosecuted for, for not um, uh, meeting your obligations to, to, to the people you borrow money from. So uh, I, I, I won't be surprised if we eventually discover that uh, it's not just about um, you know arguing for Nigerians who want to go to, to, to study abroad at master's level and having obstacles. It's also about uh, some other policies of government that will require uh, children to be able to borrow money on their own merit and then be answerable to relevant authorities in the case of default. And so you won't be able to prosecute successfully to young people who are Age. Yeah, but, but shouldn't, shouldn't that be yeah. just part of the uh, the laws, uh, the requirements to get this loan? You're below 18, then fend for yourself. If you're up to 18, you can borrow this money. So you don't have to pursue anybody that is below 18. We just saw a, a, a girl who celebrated um, her achievements having graduated from an Oshun University at the age of 19, which means if she did four years, then she was, yeah. she was less than 18 when she entered into university. What, what also are the measures that are put in place to, uh, to accommodate people who are born geniuses, uh, people who at the age of 10 can already be doing what uh, adults are doing? You know? what, what, what measures are put in place to accommodate this kind of people and all that? There is nothing. Now, nursery school, it is allowed that you can be as young as whatever, and then you go into the nursery school, you get into primary school, you get into uh, the secondary school, and before you know it, at 12, a lot of people have finished secondary school. At 14, they have finished secondary school. What will they be doing between 14 and the 18 that they should enter into university? What is it that, they, that can accommodate this kind of people? Or do they just sit back at home and wait for the four years before they go into the university? Yeah, my friend, most of the children who we think are genesis are, are not genesis. They are, they are just regular children whose parents have the money to put them through processes that make them come out as um, being smarter than their mates. They are not necessarily smarter than their mates. It's money that is making them look smarter than their mates. They are regular children in the streets. But if you have money, you bring in you know, uh, private tutors who come home and give their children extra lessons in mathematics, in, in, uh, in, uh, in English language, in ICT, yeah. and then at higher levels in chemistry, physics, and biology. And so because they are getting much more than their mates, uh, there's a tendency for them to uh, perform better in terms of, uh, you know, uh, 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 scholastic uh, aptitude. Uh, but it doesn't translate to higher intelligence because uh, you may be very uh, intelligent, but may not uh, have the best grades in school because you also need an environment that provides you the resources that um, will help you to manifest the gifts that you have, the high, high, IQ, high IQ that you have. So when we keep sometimes uh, using uh, a high, a high IQ to justify uh, fast-tracking the children's education uh, within the system, we are actually doing the wrong thing. We are overestimating the IQ of children. We are uh, using the fact that parents are using money to um, to buy bad time, uh, you know, we, we are, we are mis mistaking that for uh, the children being being genesis. How come the, all the, the argument, the Mr. Ogodoro, are, are the argument, the, the argument isn't really about the people with a higher IQ, but they are part of the group. Now, they are pe when the government makes policies that make it. Uh, 
easy for parents to send their children to school so much so that they can finish secondary school at the age of 14. Then they say you must go into the university at the age of 18. What provision was made for that if they're, they're, it, is, it is very easy and, and free for people to send their children to school at any age uh, when it is uh, a younger age? What provisions are made for that time between 14 and 18, as an instance that I'm just giving, for children to be, to be engaged productively uh, before they are ripe enough for university? Is it not too late in the educational journey to go and put a stopgap? All of this um, challenge has come as a result of government's irresponsibility. It's government's business to, 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 to cater uh, and fund uh, uh, the education of, of the citizenry. And that's what you find in most uh, sense societies, really. Uh, the reason why we are where we are is not because uh, government officially permits young people uh, children to start uh, primary school before they are six officially uh, the age at which you start primary school is the age of six that's 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 the national education policy so mm -hmm. when you start primary school at the age of six we expect you to spend six years in secondary school so you are hitting um, secondary school at the age of 12 so you spend uh, six years in secondary school if you had six uh, to, to 12. You, that's how we arrive at 18. That's, that's, that's how the of policy of government you know, says it. But the reason why we are where we are is, 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 is just the fact that we have the private school system, which you know, accounts for about 50 percent of children who are, in the, who are in the education system. So the private schools are the ones who have orchestrated this, who have created this, this challenge, who allow children to start primary one. At the age of three, at the age of at the age of four, that is unacceptable. It's it's, uh, it's nonsensical, and the parents push them, uh, giving the impression that the children uh, are, are smarter than the children of, of ordinary people. You 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 hardly can find this this situation in the public school system. It, virtually every child who is in primary one in Osho the grammar school, in the average public school anywhere, anywhere in Nigeria, is is age is age six is age six and spends six years there. They don't. They don't jump classes. All primary schools, all public primary schools across the country have primaries one to six. But it's difficult now to find a private, a private, primary, a private primary school that has primary six. Some they of don't. them even have been at primary four. So it's not the government that has encouraged people to do this. It's the private school system. But where the government gets the blame is the fact that the school inspectors are not doing the, their jobs who come from the ministries are not doing their jobs well. They have to insist that for your child to start primary one, that child should be a minimum of age five, really, uh, if at all we want to remove one year. So it's not government. Those who pass through public, pu public schools uh, get into university about the age of 18, because that's how the public school system is structured. Uh, we now have to insist that private schools must play along those lines and until we get to the point where a child is exceptionally you know uh, bright and then we can uh, start thinking about what uh, special provisions we can make for that for, for that child but such children don't constitute up to one percent of of the general population of children who are in the school system that's that's uh, uh, that's these are things we need to be uh, aware of so that we don't also blame government where they don't where they don't deserve the blame but the only blame they deserve here uh, is the one that comes from the fact that um, they are not supervising the private school system adequately they should insist that no child his primary school without getting to the age of minimum of five yeah because that was going to be my question that if the laws or the policies are they covering only the public schools because uh, are the private institutions above the law? Why are they not able to do what they're supposed to do with the private institutions as well? But you've answered that roundly. But as, an, a, 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 as a researcher, um, starting school younger than six, does it have any negative effect, effect, uh, effects? Rather? Well, uh, if you do my kind of job and have my kind of knowledge, you will know that the brain progresses in a certain fashion. So uh, one of our colleagues, as uh, several decades ago, did research regarding how the brain develops. So the brain has develops in four stages. So at the, at the 
at the point a child is born, uh, we said that that, it, we, that stage is sensory motor, where the child is not able to talk, the child uses their hands, you know, and they like to talk, to complain when the child is in this, in, in, in a state of discomfort. And then from there, when you go, you know, past the age of about two, you move to the next, you know, stage we call the pre-operational stage, then you go to concrete operational stage, then you go to formal operational stage. So. Uh, you are you, you you don't you don't acquire the capacity to think like somebody in the university at the age of seven. That's not how God has created human beings. Our brain develops as as the years pass by. So when you give a child uh, a complex task uh, that is meant for a child who should be in in junior secondary school, you give him that task when he is still in primary school. You are you are you are giving him more burden than he has been equipped intellectually to handle. So there is a way things have, should go, and the, we must also know that the reason why we are in school is not just to pass exams. We are, we are in school to uh, develop our muscles through through play. In, in Nigeria, children don't play. We, we do most of our work in the in 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 in, in, in enclosed spaces. That's not how it should be. And the, in your first six years in, in you know in life, uh, if at all you have to be in school, you should be in nursery where focus is not on getting you to learn how to read and write. You know, it's, it, the focus should be on helping you to develop your muscles, helping you to uh, learn how to play and uh, get get curious, de develop your creative ability and develop relationships with your mates and learn how to, you know, uh, understand uh, the norms of society. Learn, learn how to say please, learn how to say uh, excuse me and those, those kinds of things. But it is not a time when you have to start campaigning for, for grades and doing better than your mates. But that's unfortunately where we are where we are in nigeria so uh, by way of summary what i'm saying is that your brain is not is not um, is not organized in a way that makes you do the job of an 18 year old person when you are only nine years old no god hasn't created human beings like that you you have a children even when a child looks very bright really when it comes to wisdom you don't you don't get too much you don't get a lot of wisdom at the age of 11 because Wisdom also comes with experience, and the experience is not just the experience you get in, in, the, in the four walls of a school. That is a lot of the things that we are able to do and solve you know, practical problems with. We derive the capacity to do that by interacting with the larger environment, getting on buses, uh, you know, getting offended and offended people, and learning to resolve your differences and those kinds of things. So everything is not about biology, physics, and chemistry. We also have to give children the opportunity you know, to, to play and to make mistakes and to get up when they fall and uh, you know and, and not rush rush life because at the end of the day uh, it's not just your certificate that enables you to live productive life it's also about knowledge it's about about the right attitudes and you know and it's also about skill and it's more importantly about wisdom and demonstration of understanding it's unfortunate because uh this less than one percent you're talking about are mostly the people that grow to become the leaders that we have today because the opportunities are given to them from an early age yes. and all that and uh, it will interest you to know that if you have a child in, in in nursery school right now they come home with assignments that a lot of parents are not able to solve <laughs> because they are they are so much more than that child should carry but that's the reality we're facing and another problem is i find nowhere in nigeria i don't know if it exists but i don't find anywhere in nigeria where a government uh, runs um, a nursery school and if it has become a an important thing in our educational system today don't you think the government should also be thinking about a school that can accommodate people as young as the ones that are below six years yeah, definitely. Uh, societies that truly care, uh, especially uh, the kind of societies that go to do research, you know, in the Scandinavia, places like Norway, Finland, uh, Denmark, uh, and Sweden. Uh, what you find is that the government uh, has taken up the responsibility of um, making adequate uh, provisions for, for nursery so that um, women who uh, give birth and they are uh, playing significant roles in the corporate world. They're able to go to work and government, you know, employs teachers and uh, uh, child minders who take care of their children while they're away. Uh, but Nigeria is not yet at that level. Uh, our politicians uh, have become experts on how to waste national resources. And so they are not able to find money to pay uh, teachers in primary uh, and secondary schools and those in universities. And they, even now, you can see they're asking parents and their children to also pay for higher education. 
even though uh, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are, you know, making it look like the state government by way of lending them money. But it's money they have to pay. But so uh, the point one is trying to, you know, put on record there is that government must uh, recognize that it, it has the responsibility to educate the citizenry because when you do that, you are making an investment in, 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 in our political development, in our social development, in our economic well-being. But the governments we have around here, right from, you know, local government to federal level, are, are generally not governments that have come to realize that education truly is the bedrock of development and that when you don't make adequate provisions, you know, that cater for the smooth, uh, you know, development of, of, of citizens, you are actually bargaining for very difficult times. Uh, unfortunately, these people too have also passed through very, difficult, very unfortunate education system themselves. Most of the people running Nigeria now are also people whose, whose parents were in charge some years back. And so they have taken over and nobody has made a deliberate effort to put them through a good education system that makes them de demonstrate you know, responsibility, social responsibility, make them know that they are in the public service to serve, they are, they are in the public service to make a difference, they are in the public service to help us um, you know, deal with our development challenges. And, and uh, what may uh, surprise you, interestingly, is that many of, most of the people who are running your country as politicians are people who, whose children are actually not um, getting trained and getting, you know, exposed to the problems of, of, of Nigeria. Uh, many of them are, in, are studying in international schools that use uh, British curriculum, Canadian curriculum, American curriculum. And those curricula are curricula that are designed to deal with problems of those societies. So Nigerian children are here studying in Lagos, in Abuja, and in Portacourt, but nobody is making them aware of the challenges that we are grappling with here as a society. So they, they study in silos where they are insulated from the problems that other people are facing in, in our society. So they grow up and eventually become the politicians who go to Abuja to become lawmakers and become uh, policy executors and formulators who are not aware of the regular challenges people face in Ocean, you know, in, uh, in Gombe, in Owere, in, uh, in Uyo. And that's a major, a major area of concern, you know, to some of us who, who really love this country and who want things to change, change for the better. So we need to um, probably start thinking about making laws, as I, we have put on record over and over, and we have demanded over and over. We need to get to a point where we insist that if you are going to be a minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, if you are going to be a commissioner of anything in a state, and if you are going to be chairman of a local government or councillor, we should insist that all such people uh, have to have their children in the public school system if they still have children who are uh, still at, that, at those levels of education. That way, they will begin to wear the shoes and know where the shoes pinch, and they will, because their own children are going to suffer if adequate provisions are not made, begin to make an adequate effort to put the right resources in place, and then get the, hire the right teachers, train them, and they compensate them well so that they can be motivated to train their children well. But at the moment, that's not where we are. Children of the rich who run Nigeria don't study in the places where these very poor provisions are made. So they study in places that are insulated from, from, from the problems of Nigeria. And uh, at the end of the day, they make policies that, that do not reflect what the average person is going through in the street. Okay, well, well, we do hope we'll get to that point. I remember a governor in the north that put his child in a public primary school and it didn't take uh, more than one term and he removed that child for security reasons, for so many other uh, reasons that he gave, instead of making sure these things that were lacking were put in place in that school. But this is how far we can go today. I wish we had more time. But this is a conversation that continues, and I'm sure that some other time we'll pick an angle that we will look at again. Our education system is really really nothing to write home about and we hope that we will get to that point of improvement where we can beat our chest and say we produce the best uh, graduates that can hold their own anywhere in the world we'd like to thank you mr ogudorot for coming on the program this morning my pleasure enjoy the rest of the day you too We've been talking to uh, Dr. Peter Ogudoro, education researcher. We're looking at uh, what the registrar of JAM said, that uh, some, some universities 
um, admit students that are underage and we were able to establish the fact that it has been a law all this while but they just flaunt it and we recognize the problem as coming from the supervisors uh, in the Ministry of Education that may not be doing their work well. Whatever it is, let's up our game and make sure Nigeria's education system is better. This is where we draw the curtain on the program this morning. We'd like to thank you for being a wonderful audience and we're hoping that we will uh, reconnect tomorrow for yet another edition of The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Until then, on behalf of the entire crew, uh, my name is Nyamgul Agaji. See you tomorrow.